Now then everyone, this is the Wedding Mavericks podcast, a podcast for wedding photographers and videographers who want to build successful and sustainable businesses. My name is Jules, I'm joined by Lindsay and in this episode we are discussing the importance of workflows and how they form the foundations of your business. Well, Linz. Well, well. You're back this week. I'm back. Yeah. Guess who's back? <laughs> and guess what? What? I brought the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Should we call you Olaf? Is it Olaf. <laughs> yeah. Would much prefer it in summer. <laughs> I can't wait for summer. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are we all doing? Is it snowing where you are? Oh, gosh, we've got to the start of March. And I didn't think it was going to happen this year. No, I because Mar- March in the UK usually is kind mm. of the, the, the cut-off zone, well, isn't it? Things are starting to bloom, aren't they? The, the petals are starting yeah, the, to bloom. The bulbs and are starting we've to got, come through yeah. and flowers are coming out. Yeah. So we've had daffodils, lovely daffodils. We live quite near a field here and just opposite, there's lots and lots of daffodils that grow all the way around it. And um, yeah, so bit of a novelty so uh this afternoon we've we've had our, our youngest daughter amy she's come home from school a bit early because the roads were getting a little bit bad because of the snow so she's she's come home early it might even end up as a full-on snow day tomorrow <laughs> but uh yeah we hope you're able to enjoy it wherever you are and it's not um sort of impacted you negatively uh and you can have a, a fun snow day yourself absolutely yeah so uh what have you guys all been up to over the last week or two uh at this end of things jules you had a couple of days out filming last week yeah um kind of like a style issue workshop mm-hmm. thingy um that, thingy. a thingy <laughs> um that I did and i was just kind of doing some behind the scenes for the photographer that was um like running the the shoot yeah so that was nice just to get out and be kind of it's been a few weeks since i've yeah. used the camera so it was just nice to to do a bit of video behind the scenes for that yeah and that was called what workshops for, photobomb photobomb workshops mm. yeah that um had been uh, arranged by hannah brooke that's been on the podcast previously and um uh, an associate of hers that's a makeup artist uh, called chris chapman yeah yeah Cool. So that was a nice opportunity for um, sort of people that um, are, I I won't say new to wedding photography. Looking looking for opportunities to like, to to get some more shooting experience in different scenarios, um, you know, a venue that maybe they hadn't shot at before um, with with some models and get some, some content. So yeah, um, that was nice to to kind of cool. to go and capture behind the scenes of that, and then I had a like a, a more of a commercial type shoot mm. with a charity that we work with sometimes. So that was good. Yeah, got out out and about. Yeah, out and about. Good. It's quite a time at the moment, just trying to yeah. finish up the edits and stuff. So yeah, and that's it. And and I suppose just as we talked about before, this kind of segment of the year, it's is the ideal opportunity. You know whether. You're going to kind of delve into working on your, your business behind the scenes, your own kind of development and upskilling, or just kind of networking and getting to know other professionals and um, maybe doing other types of work and things like that as well. So, yeah, yeah. we hope you, that in this time, because the weeks are certainly flying by, I can't believe we're into well into March now already, aren't we? Um, yeah. And uh, the, the busier season, gosh, I just didn't even think it, but it's soon going to be upon us, isn't it? So, yeah, we hope you're, you're all good and you're all managing to make good use of the time. Uh, one thing that you could be looking at in terms of the work behind the scenes, of course, is your workflows within yep. your business. Yep. So workflows then. We do photography, we do videography for weddings, of what significance is a workflow to us then? Talk us through, Jules, a little bit about what is one essentially and why might it be useful to wedding photographers, videographers? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we've obviously, part of the title is, you know, workflows are the foundation of business. And that is, the reason for, for saying that as a title is because it 
I, I genuinely think that is true. I think that do you need to have workflows? Absolutely not. You can you can run a business or you can be a photographer or videographer without having formalized workflows, but you definitely will have ways that you do things. Mm. You'll have ways that you work and that essentially is a workflow. It's just not necessarily formalized. Mm. And you get workflows in all sorts of types of industry, businesses, yeah. different, you know, different types of job if you like or even just in everyday life like even if we do washing up we probably do a workflow because we've probably got a way of doing it that we do every time so essentially what a workflow is is a repeatable process you know a series of tasks that gets us from one part to the other a path from start to finish if mm. you like and like in other environments like the military or you know something like that they might call them referred to them as like standard operating procedures or something mm -hmm. and they're widely used across all walks of life it's like i've just said about the washing up you know you probably anything you do you probably do it the same every single time and there's a good reason for that because it kind of gets you you know over time you develop ways of doing things that work mm. so rather than you know taking longer on things or taking you know making mistakes when you do things it's better, isn't it? If you've found a way that works for you, you just mm. do it the same every time. That's essentially all we're talking about when we're talking about workflows. But in your photography and videography business, if you have more formalized workflows, it's definitely going to help you in lots of different ways. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, let's give you some examples of ways that it might help you. So, um, it creates, they create efficiency and speed. So, if you think about it, you could get any task, any job that you need to do done um, and you could go around the houses doing it. You could um, you could go back and forward about the, how you're going to do it and try different things. Mm. But if you found a way that works and you found a way that's quick, um, you know, you'll probably do it like that every time because it allows you to make quicker, smarter decisions on things. Mm -hmm. So rather than, uh, what shall I do? You know, if you've got a workflow in place, it just cuts out all the what shall I do. Yeah. And you just go straight to it. Yeah. So for all of us, you know, time, I don't want to use the cliche of time is money, but if, the longer something takes us, that's time we can't spend doing something else. Yeah. Whether that's on your business from a work-related perspective or whether it's, other things that you might want to do with your family or in your social life. Um, and so, of course, all of us want to be able to do everything as quickly as possible. Mm. Even if you th even if you think, well, I like taking my time over stuff. We all want to be efficient. Yeah. Um, another, another reason is it creates consistency. Mm. So by creating consistency, we're going to raise standards, whether that's in our work, you know, in the, in the output, of like maybe the actual images, films that we make, or whether it's just a case of, you know, when we do something, we know it's going to be ready. Like, for example, we will be talking about specific types of, of workflows that we might use in our business shortly. But if you think about, for example, packing your bag, if you do it in the same way every single time, you won't forget the lens that you need. Mm -hmm. You won't not put SD cards or whatever in the camera. You won't forget to charge your batteries. So we want that consistency because we want our work to look consistent, but we also want to be able to prepare consistently to yeah. do our jobs. And yeah. it's not just, you know, shoot that shooting example was just one, but mm -hmm. there are lots of different examples where consistency is key i mean it really you know mm. consistency is key Absolutely. if you do something the same every time you will you know you, you're reducing the mistakes yeah. which is actually the which next is. point <laughs> so minimizing errors so you, you do things right every time because you've created that consistency and that's a really good reason to have workflows yeah and it almost becomes becomes second nature to you then doesn't it and right when you're in the the bits of peak season busy season maybe you've got one two three jobs over the course of a weekend you know and what you need to know is that the workflow that you're going to um work through 
went post wedding. So you've done day one's wedding, you know, you've prepped for it, done for it, but you get home and you know you've got a wedding to go to the next day. Yeah. So the workflow that you have for then decanting, if you like, <laughs> batteries, cards, the files that you've obtained during the day, how are you going to safeguard all of that and then make sure that it's all ready to go again for the next day? Yeah. So those three things that we've talked about to start with, they all kind of have this reciprocal thing of making sure that we, we're confident and we're not umming and ahhing. We're not second guessing. Mm. You know, there are, there are some, there are some things that work workflows are going to help us with, which are just, you know, they're not time sensitive. They're not pressure situations we can take our time over them. But by having workflows for those things, we're going to make sure that we um, are doing them in an efficient way and that we're not missing things out. But then there are also workflows that can help us for times of stress. And this is, you know, if I know we're talking about wedding photography and videography business here, but because we used to be in the police, I can refer to this. And this, you know, I, I mentioned about the military having standard operating procedures. The reason there are lots of reasons for having workflows and standard operating procedures, but one of them is if you're in a stressful situation, if you've practiced something and there is a process for doing it, you will, re, you know, you already. This is why I mention it because you kind of brought that up it's it's second nature mm. so you revert to a state of you know if if let's be honest at a wedding it's happening quick some people are in a they're almost in a flow with it because they've done that many weddings but if if you're not able to be in a flow mm. or if things don't go quite you know maybe you you're really experienced and you're well versed in it all but if things don't quite go to, to plan mm. if you don't have like a workflow as such it doesn't necessarily have to be you're not going to start looking at a sheet necessarily we're not saying that but in your mind if you don't do it the same way every time um you're going to be umming and ahhing you're going to it's going to waste this time and you're probably going to get yourself in a bit of a muddle rather than just going boom 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 i've made the decision i've sorted it out I got, you know, I didn't miss that moment mm. because I, you know, I was I wasn't looking for the solution. The solution was already there because yeah. that's how I always do it. Yeah. Um so moving on to the next sort of point is it, they increase productivity. Um because by, you know, having that consistency and having that efficiency and speed minimizing those errors we're, we're able to eliminate redundancy and duplication. So we're not going back over say, the same ground. We're not ch- rechecking things all the time. Mm. We're not having to redo anything. Um, we're not wasting time on little tasks that we don't necessarily need to do. Because if you're not sure, because you haven't really nailed your workflow, you, you kind of, you might be, might be experimenting a bit more. You might be going back and forth. But if you've got a, a solid workflow, mm-hmm. you're, re, you're eliminating all that redundancy. You're reducing all that wasted time. You're not duplicating anything. You're just going straight to what you need to do, getting it done. So that's, you know, a massive thing in terms of, you know, your output, especially when you're thinking about, like, your editing and things like that. You know, if... If you're at a place where you're fairly new to editing photos or you're fairly new to editing films, it might take you a lot. Like, you might hear somebody who's more experienced saying, I can edit a set of photos in a few hours. And that same set of photos might be taking you days or weeks. And the same with editing film. You know, you might hear someone say, yeah, I can edit all of a wedding in a day. And then somebody else might be taking a month over that same set mm. of set of films, mm. and that isn't necessarily going to be. Th- there will be things to do with the, the experience that that person's gained, but a lot of it will be down to workflow. It, it, you know, and so what I'm saying there is, is if you get your workflows nailed, you're like almost anybody can be that quick you know you can be as you can be as fast at a task as anybody else Mm. just by having that workflow 
Yeah. It's not necessarily about just your qu- your whether you're slow or whether you're quick at something. Mm. It's about I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I think it's it's helpful as a planning tool as well. Yeah, because um, if you have so let's just talk about the editing process then, um, or think about the process of, of of editing, whether you're doing singularly photos, films, or perhaps you are a hybrid shooter and you're doing the two of them. If you are aware that you've got a a workflow and that works efficiently for you, no doubt we'll always, always still be looking to kind of gain that extra, you know, 0.5, that 1%, that little bit, always looking for efficiencies. But if you've got to a place where that workflow feels good to you, well, as you're receiving new inquiries, and you're looking at, so we're in March right now, we are still, for example, getting inquiries for this year. Whether it's this year or next year that you're looking at. So we know for, for us, August is that the door is closed. No yeah. more bookings to be taken on in August because we look at the volume of work that is there and a consideration for that is, okay, where does that leave me in September and October, November potentially for Hopefully other not work. too much of it, but yep. for other work and the backlog, you know, the, the queue that will form from there, even though I know that this is my workflow and on average, this is how long it will take me to edit yeah. a film, a set of photos, a combination of the two. So I think when you are looking or you get to a point like with this year, we're looking at where the gaps perhaps still are in the calendar, but we're looking also closely at well, where is there already? So August is without a doubt the busiest month. So, okay, an inquiry came in yesterday for September. Is that something realistically that we can look at? Because we're thinking about all the editing to do from August weddings, but thinking about the workflow, thinking about the average amount of time. And that's just it. It's also in addition to to the uh, the, the advantages that you've already pointed out. Yeah. I think, yeah, don't forget it as, as something that can assist you with your planning through the year absolutely so another way that we can reduce time using workflows is is through utilizing automation and yeah that's it's a bit more of a specific uh, point really around tools so you know we'll we'll maybe talk about this a little bit more in a bit but project management tools um customer relation management software these things can help us with automation Um, and there are lots of areas of your business which if you use tools like that that you can automate certain processes as part of workflows and honestly if I if I had to give one one thing that you know we've saved so much time in you know we I could go on about well editing times when we first started were this much and we've got them down to this much and stuff like that 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 definitely saves time but the generic administration of like dealing with inquiries and bookings uh, you know dealing with payments communications with clients by being able to automate all that through our crm it's the, t- the biggest time saver and that's mm-hmm. why the biggest investment that we've made you know in terms of like the return return on investment from the amount of money you spend in is is studio ninja the crm um so obviously we, we're not going to go through all that in this podcast about how you set up automations in Studio Ninja, but you, c- you can do them and, and you can in most CRMs set up a workflow, which is more of a, you know, ticky box exercise. You can either do it where you manually um, set off the, the automation or whether you set dates and times or time parameters for the automation to happen. Mm-hmm. And then it, it just basically means you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. Mm. It takes care of certain things for you. We'll go through that shortly. So, and the last one is that a workflow allows you to evaluate your performance in like a a way that, and, and I, I know I, I totally get that if you've listened this far, you might be thinking these are not, this isn't the sexiest topic in the world. You know, a lot of these topics aren't, you know, compared to, oh, new cameras and shooting and how you get this to do this and all that. But it, it really is important. And 
you know, we, we talked about in a previous podcast, knowing your numbers and evaluating your performance, evaluating where you are in your business in terms of bookings and um, in terms of like revenue and, and all the rest of it is really important if you're going to be in this for the long term to be able to look back on that. And what, what it does is a workflow gives you compatible statistics from year to year because you standardise the way that you do things. You're not mm. kind of just doing it willy-nilly and changing things. You just, for example, inquiry comes in, you deal with it in the same way and then... For example, in the CRM we use, you archive the, the inquiry. It keeps all the data there. If you've treated that inquiry in exactly the same way, then you can look at all sorts of things, not necessarily automated as in it just produces this report for you because mm. it's not that, that um, statistic-heavy is Studio Ninja, but you can look through your data in if you want to manually and you can see you know you can see things like how many people respond to email the first email how many people respond to follow up email number three and that stuff can really help you to tweak your workflow to tweak your um, ways of doing things to convert clients for instance Mm. so if you're into that sort of thing having a workflow that's you know got a set way of doing things is really good Mm. and I think that's the thing it's quite an individual thing yeah isn't it everyone's so going to do it different, yeah. everybody's going to do it differently absolutely and um you will go through some trial and error with your workflows you will design some workflows that work well for you in the beginning of your business but as things evolve so too I would expect are they, like we talked about efficiencies already, reducing the number of errors that are made, you know, all that you will sort of start to understand through experience. Yep. And you will have created workflows that suit you and your circumstances, you know. Now, that might be something that's really formalised within your business. It could be something that is... It's kind of an old police phrase. It's written on the back of a fag packet, (laughs) a zig packet. It could be something that's jotted down in a note paper, a notepad. It might be a note on your phone. It could be, you know, a formalised computer system, like we've said. But it's going to be some kind of formalised process, like you've said, that you'll go through so that you don't make a mistake. Now, if you've ever found yourself in a position where you've forgotten to reply to that email, you've missed replying to that email um, or a message or a phone call or whatever inquiry it is that's come through. There's nothing worse than when that person then follows it up and you're like, oh gosh, you know. If you've ever forgotten a piece of kit that you're going to take to a wedding, if you've ever felt like you're running late, you're not sure where you're going. Um, oh no, the bride did tell me that this was going to happen at this time, and I've but I wrote it down somewhere else. It's not on the itinerary for the day. I can't believe it. I've forgotten it. If you've ever found yourself in that position, there's a good chance that potentially that's occurred because you don't necessarily have a thorough workflow in place. Yeah. Okay. Now we're certainly not here preaching to you, trying to sell you anything or saying we use this workflow software or anything like that, because we, you know, we don't, there are things that just like you've mentioned, Jules, we use a CRM, which helps us with a particular element of some of our workflows, but you know, there's no kind of big sell to push you in one direction or other here. That's because simply because it's it's kind of each to their own. Whatever and works, you know for, works you, it, for you, you know, and, it's and just your important business to do practice. It. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so there's probably you know there's there's a lot of different workflows that you could implement for your wedding photo and video business. In the like you know, we there isn't one workflow for for us. Workflows are set into different tasks or different sections of doing your doing your work Mm -hmm. Um, because that way it kind of compartmentalizes things you know this set of tasks and this procedure is really good for this and then some some other task has another one so we're going to be going through some of those workflows some of those procedures if you like that we we do and some might overlap and some might be entangled with each other but that's okay just as long as you know when it comes to doing these you know that particular thing that you're going to follow 
the workflow that you've got for it. Um, and the, these are going to be related to shooting and acquiring clients. Um, and there are going to be other work, workflows for other parts of your business that we might mention. So we're going to give you some some examples and we're going to try and talk through it practically how we do it. Um, so let's share that with you so that you've got a, an idea of how you might want to, you know, everybody works different and everyone's going to come up with their, their own version of their workflow. Mm. But the reason we're talking about it is because it's really important to have something, you know, just a way of doing it. And whether that's in your head, whether you write it down, whatever you do, it's really important to have something. Mm. So let's start with marketing workflow because that starts way before a wedding day, doesn't mm -hmm. it? But marketing, whether you actively call it marketing, whether you, you know, have actual things that you do to market your business, either organic or paid, you know, you, everybody's going to be doing that, mm -hmm. right? We can't get clients unless we're doing something. They don't just, they don't just, you know, come out. They don't just know that you're a photographer or a filmmaker <laughs> and contact you. You've got to somehow attract those people. So the way we're going to do that might be through organic stuff. It might be through paid stuff. But ideally, we're going to have a, a set of tasks, a workflow that means we're doing certain things on a daily or a weekly or a monthly basis. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, because you've created a workflow, and that doesn't necessarily have to be something that's written down. It just it it could just be every day at seven o'clock in the morning. I post something on Instagram. You know, you've got you've got something to post, or every or once a week, or every three days, whatever. But you just do that. You know, you've got kind of this process that you mm. go through. It doesn't have to be formalized necessarily, but by doing that, you, you're you are having a workflow, aren't you? Because you're doing that task on a on a regular basis, on a set basis. Because mm. um, if you're going to post, what do you need in order to be able to do that? You need an image, short video, a reel, whatever it is. You need some material to yeah. be able to post. You need to think about um, what additions do I need to include with that? Does that mean that I use a scheduler to do that? So I need to kind of understand how I set that aspect of the workflow up and schedule those items. Um, how much information am I going to write? Do I need to tag suppliers? Do I need to tag pe other people that were involved in that particular wedding? What research do I need to do with that? You know, there's quite yeah. a bit of prep work really sometimes that That's a good word to use, into, like, pr the prep work, isn't it? You've got, you've basically, you, you don't, it doesn't just happen you've got to put something in to get something out. Mm. And so the preparation aspect is part of your workflow. Yeah. And you will have a way that you do that. You know, you will have somewhere that you go to find out which suppliers were at that wedding who or were involved in that wedding. Mm. You will have some kind of process in your mind for writing the captions you know, you'll, you'll have a go-to thing. And if you don't have a go-to thing, you might be like us and you might really struggle with social media generally when you're busy. Cause you, because I would say that this is probably, I've started with what is our worst workflow. This is what needs the most work. Do you know, we don't really do this very well. All the other ones we're going to talk about, we've got quite nailed down. Mm. But this one, this is the one that needs work on it. Yeah. Hence why if you go on our social media, you know, it's so sporadic and it's pointless. You know, ask anybody who who does well in social media, they'll say that, you know, just posting every now and then is not very helpful. Mm. <laughs> and that's what we've been doing. But it's it's because it, it kind of is at the bottom of the list because we because we've got inquiries coming from different places and we do different things. Certainly the marketing workflow, when I'm saying we're just talking about Instagram there. The, we have quite a solid marketing workflow that's spread, but it's just it, the mm. social media bit lets it down. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's there's definitely a lot more um, th thought, planning and executing on um, paid marketing. Yeah. When you do it. Yeah. So there's there's a more consistent workflow, I feel, with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one that I've put in place quite some time ago and it kind of, 
is just we can just turn it on and off, which mm. is useful. I guess in itself, that's a workflow that we've created, and it just means that when we want to increase the inquiries, we just turn the ad on, mm-hmm. and it does its thing. Mm-hmm. And then because we've got other things in place, which we're going to go on to, we can handle those inquiries in a in a really consistent way. Yeah. But just to just to quickly round up on the marketing thing, you know, marketing successfully usually involves creating like multiple touch points with clients or, you know, being seen more than once. So that's why a really good marketing workflow is is got to be or ideally is going to be like multi platform or multi place, you know, it does all the inquiries don't just come from one place and you're not doing just one thing to get them. Mm. Your your workflow involves a a set of procedures. For example, this will overlap with something that we'll talk about a a few down from this, but the post wedding workflow part of that is, is, um, is, is posting videos to YouTube. And by posting videos to YouTube, it creates inquiries and that's the pretty much the only reason for doing it. Um, and that is, it's kind of part of the post delivery workflow, but it's also a part of the marketing workflow. Mm. And it's just a little strand of it. And, you know, th- quite a complex workflow to explain, much more complex, I guess, than some of the other ones. But if you, you know, you will have your marketing workflow, whether it's something that's written down, something that you actively really think about or just something that organically is going on in your mind, mm. it's a workflow. And it, you know, the more refined you can get that, mm. the more successful it'll be, the less time it'll take you. Because mm. I just think it's it's, <clears throat> it's not um, so easy as to just have one set, workflow is it kind of that there are between different social media platforms for instance or like you said if you were to use like utilize youtube or something like that you're going to have to make adaptations to that that material that you've created to use as part of your marketing workflow yeah well how are you going to service that on the different platforms which because becomes part of the will, workflow i guess yeah yeah so we've got we've got the inquiry you know we've we've been marketing and we've got some sort of inquiry coming in to us and we need some kind of workflow to deal with the inquiries so we, what we want to be looking at is you know from initial contact we want to know how that's going to come in we use we use like we've said a crm to do that you'll have your own your own workflow i know that pre-using a crm which we've used for years now we had a contact form on our website and that manually when people filled that in it manually sent us an email um and then we had to take that information we had to put it somewhere else and then we had to manually respond to that that email now you know what we ended up developing was some kind of very rough templates that we'd keep in a word document or on a apple note or whatever and then we'd copy and paste that text in we'd change the text but we had to do that all manually and then we'd reply to the inquiry but then we had to manage that somehow. We had to uh, think about how we were going to um, remember to follow up with that. Um, what? How were we going to know about the status of that inquiry? Uh, and essentially, we need to be doing some follow-ups. You, you know, there's no point sending one reply to a, a, a client, a potential client, and then if they don't respond straight away, just forgetting about it. You really mm-hmm. are missing a massive trick if that's what you're doing. You really need to be going back and, you know, checking in with clients. Now, all right, there's a whole, you know, there's a whole debate around what's acceptable in terms of follow-ups. What's, you know, how are people, different people going to react to different types of follow-ups? Like, you know, do you do it every day for like a week or two weeks or four weeks? Do you do it every few days? Do you do it once a week for a few few weeks? You, you know, that's kind of going to be a personal preference mm. and what works for you. But somehow you've got to manage to remind yourself to follow up, right? And if, you know, you do get some kind of response like, no thanks, or, you know, yes, please, what do we do next? Mm. How do we then deal with that? you know, the next steps, how do we manage the process of 
bringing that person in. So again, using a CRM to do that just takes a lot of the issues that I've just said out of it. You're not thinking, how am I going to manage the follow-ups? Mm. How am I going to remember? Yeah. And how am I going to manage that communication? It's kind of helped, you helped out so much by using a CRM. Yeah. Um, and again, like part of that follow-up process, uh, part of that work, that inquiry process is if they do say no, something that we really advocate and we do it and we actually get a lot of information from it, don't we, is we ask why. Like, you know, mm. thanks for the inquiry. Glad you found somebody or glad you've, you know, you've worked out what you're doing. But would you mind sharing with us who you've gone with, how much you were going to spend, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. And we get a lot of information from that and it's useful for... From a marketing perspective, it's useful from a business development perspective. It's good to keep your eye on the market. And if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have that information. So that's part of our inquiry workflow, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of links nicely into where you would go um, or what happens then from your initial kind of inquiry or contact. What happens with your quotes, with invoices contracts that sort of thing kind of formalizing the booking with people and then the sort of continued communication from there um from them a- again it's, it's kind of referring sorry just to to kind of be repeating but once again that that for us that that extended workflow if you like that's managed for us um by the crm that we use yeah um and and again it's just you talked about consistency avoiding errors, um, efficiency, and we find with whether it's uh, from the point of inquiry through to a new booking and then the management of that up until um, the actual wedding day itself and and beyond as well, I suppose, um, post-wedding, that's that's excellent for us. Yeah, um, well, think about what it was like before and it's Mm. uh, it's a long time since we, we started using the CRM, so we've been using it a long time. But if you think about before, early days, how we used to manage, you know, getting an inquiry, following up with that, then them saying, yeah, I want a book and then dealing with the quote, dealing with the contract, dealing with the invoice, dealing with general communication. If we, if you don't have something to do that, that's like there's a lot of work there involved in in managing all these emails, sending all these emails, sending using different systems to send a quote and using a different system to send out a contract for them to sign. It's yeah, like that's a. I remember how much work that was, and in those early days, we'd get you know we'd get one inquiry every couple of weeks or a month. You know we got really not hardly any inquiries. And when you did get them, they might book. So if they booked, you had loads of time to to get on with that and and deal with it because you didn't have the volume of inquiries and you didn't Mm. have the volume of bookings. Mm. But then as soon as you start, your business starts to take off and you start becoming more successful with it, you do not, you know, you're shooting more, but then as well, all the admin time, you know, you don't have time to do all that manually. No. You need something in place to be to be doing that efficiently. So that that in itself, what we've just gone through, is is technically a separate workflow because your inquiry workflow is one part of it and it goes both ways. You know, they might book or they might not. Um, and then you kind of trigger a new workflow when someone books because then there's a whole set of different set of tasks and procedures that you need to follow, mm. that you need to manage. And we need to do it the same same way every time, yeah. uh, and 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 kind of going on through that, leading up to when we get to the wedding. And between then and the wedding, for example, we gather information through questionnaires and things like that. And again, that's a workflow situation because then we know that we've always gathered the same information, and we know that we've always booked the call with the client before the wedding to go through stuff that makes sure it's the same every time mm. we don't go oh, shit we don't know what what's happening at that mm. point because we've we've sent a questionnaire out if they don't complete the questionnaire for one reason or another we're having a call with them before the the wedding we've seen the questionnaire before the wedding we know there's a gap we find out the information mm. And that's that's not only, so think of both sides of the coin there, that's not only beneficial for us in making sure that we're organised for the day and that we don't have any kind of 
unknowns or as few unknowns as possible going into to that day we're as, as best prepared as we possibly can be but why else is that important we'll think about the customer service the standard of customer service that you give to people yeah and also think about in the time that you've been doing this as a photographer or videographer how many people have come to you as a referral from another couple how many people have come to you as a referral from another supplier so reputation is huge isn't it for us and we we all know how important customer service is so if a new inquiry comes to us and it's a referral from another couple or supplier, for instance, certainly from another couple, you want to know that you are delivering the exact same standard of high standard of service to this new inquiry as what you did to their friends, yeah. to the previous couple. Because if you don't, and it's a bit of a, a catastrophe, you know, there's a bit of a catastrophe because... We're just not gathering the same information in the same way. We're not keeping them informed of, you know, uh, the le- the amount of contact that they will have from us from the point of booking to, you know, let's say their wedding's 18 months, two years away. We, we, we need to think about managing their expectations of what amount of contact they're going to have with us along the way, how we're going to make sure we've got all the information that we need from them, that they feel assured they've got the right people on the lead up to the wedding. If we're not doing all of that when we did that for their friends, they're going to kind of think, oh, I'm not right happy with that, this actually. Mm-hmm. And it, know, reflects, that, it reflects badly on, on the people that have referred them and it reflects, yeah. then it re- reflects badly on you. And Absolutely. it's like a reciprocal thing and, yeah. and you just want to be able to give the same, sta- you know, it's for you, but it's also for them. Mm. You know, they get the same, everyone mm. gets treated the same and you know that you're, you're doing what you always do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that leads nicely on to the, you know, the pre-wedding workflow so at the point where we we're going to do the wedding we know we've got all that information so we know we've done really good customer service so when we turn up at the wedding we're already we're already winning because we've we've already presented ourselves well that's why those workflows are so important before the wedding Mm -hmm. because they're like wow these guys really communicate well Mm -hmm. they they, they've got the you know they've got the shit together basically yeah and then they're showing that they care about our day. They're yeah. showing that, that that they're invested in our day. Um, you know that that's all part and parcel of your standard of customer service, isn't it? Yeah. And how you make your couple feel. I mean, to, to just to just to give you a small example of of part of that workflow for us, as well as like you know multiple touch points of sending emails and and sending out the questionnaires at, at times and arranging calls. That there's an automated email that sends from from our CRM the day before the wedding that just says it's two lines it says we're really excited about your wedding tomorrow which I know it's automated we haven't written it but we do mean it you know mm. it doesn't take us any time it's sent out by the computer system but it it says that and it has my number on so if they need to get hold of me they can and honestly nearly every single couple sends an email back to mm. that saying oh yeah. Thank you so much. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. Right, thank, thank right, you for the email. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it's just a, an extra bit of b- rapport building, but also gives them that confidence because, you know, the, I'll tell you now. One of the things that couples worry about on their wedding day is that like the suppliers aren't going to show up and things aren't going to go how they've planned. Mm. And if you email them the day before and you give them your phone number, right, nothing's going to go wrong. Hopefully. But you're just basically giving them an extra piece of reassurance saying, mm. here's my number. You know, if you, if you, you, you don't have to look for it. Mm. If, you, if you need to get hold of me, it's there. It's yeah. cool. Yeah, because so. we, we all know how nervous our couples are, Yeah, don't we, on the, on the morning of the wedding. There, yeah. there are very few and far between um, people that who are not feeling the nerves in some way or other. So it's just one less thing for them to have on their mind um, because from their perspective as well, you know, the, there are so many questions for them, so many people coming at them on the day and so many kind of people that sort of want a piece of them in, in, in some respect in, you know, what about this, what about that? What do, you, what do you want to do with this? Where do you want this? How do you want this? When do you want it? And they can't make a workflow because they don't do it. They only get married once. 
So they can't really have a work. Most couples don't have a a tick list. Some do. I've met some that do. <laughs> but not many have a tick list of yeah. everything to go through. So yeah. um, so I, I mentioned about the pre-wedding workflow. So at this point, we're talking about things that are actually going to be pertinent to us. It's not necessarily about necessarily delivering the service, but it's about how we're going to manage ourselves. So for instance, prepping your gear. If you prep your gear in the same way every single time, then hopefully you don't forget the batteries. Hopefully you don't forget the SD cards. Hopefully your lenses are clean and they're not full of shit, you know, on the front so that when you start taking photos, you know, you, you've got you've got last wedding's stuff on your SD card because you haven't formatted it and there's all sorts of crap on your lens and, and you're thinking, oh my God, I need to wipe my lens, but I don't have a lens cloth. All that sort of stuff, yeah? If you do it the same way every time, mm. you get it right. You won't forget stuff. You'll be ready for whatever happens. Mm. Um, same with, you know, preparing your travel, knowing your routes. You know, if it's somewhere you've not been before, having a look on the sat nav and everything, looking at how long it's going to take you, considering what, you know, the weather's like, if there's going to be, you know, right now it's snowing. There are people on the wedding groups right now, uh, multiple posts I've seen today saying, mm. is anybody near X venue? Because it's in the middle of, because we live in the countryside in Yorkshire and they're like, people are fretting about not being able to get to a wedding tomorrow. So they're saying, yeah. is anybody close to this wedding venue that if I can't, if I'm snowed in and I can't get there, can can someone jump in for me? You know, or if the roads are, are snarled up and I can't, I'm stuck in traffic. Mm. Which is good, isn't it? That's a pre-wedding workflow. You're thinking about things in advance, you know, and familiarising yourself with the job. We've talked about the questionnaires, we've talked about the information gathering, and we've got that information. Well, what are we going to do with it? We need to know it. Mm -hmm. So we want to read through that stuff, make sure that we're like, you know, believe me, when you've been doing this for a while, there's always something that surprises you. Like you read through that questionnaire the night before and you go, mm -hmm. whoa, the they're getting ready in a completely different place to what I thought they were. Mm. Or, whoa, whoa, they've put 7 a.m. on here. They're expecting me at 7 a.m. You know, and that you were expecting to get there for nine or whatever. Mm. And, that you know, it might be something to do with they've got some freak ceremony that's happening at half past 10 in the morning, you know, because that's the only time the registrar could do it, whatever. It's just mm. stuff like this happens. Stuff and like that and, like, little details as well, you know, pr perhaps about, I think it's, I think it's very easy and I've done it myself before where you kind of, it's almost like an autopilot of you maybe fall into assuming that there is a parental unit involved yes. in there. So, you know, nothing worse than kind of saying, oh, so um, will your dad be coming to, to look at a reveal? Uh, or your mum and your dad this, or, you know, your grandparents yeah, for this. they've been divorced, oh, or gosh. one of them has passed away, than, and you really put yeah, your foot in it. You really put your foot in it, because they told you about that on the call, and you did jot it down, but what you've not gone and done is had your hand, added your handwritten note to your typed note, or, or something like that, or you've just, um, you know, particularly peak season, the dangers of this kind of happening. Well, they just all blur just, into each other, it, don't they? You, you just forget for, couples' names by that point. Forgetting the, the small details for, for yeah. things, yeah. Yeah, so really important to have that kind of pre-wedding workflow. Then we get to the wedding day. Again, another workflow. We're not going to go through that, but let's, however you shoot a wedding, that's your workflow. And I'd be really surprised if you've been doing this for at least a year, if you don't have a set way that you approach it. Mm. If you've done like 20 weddings, you probably have a way that you do it every single time at that point because you know it doesn't mean that you film or photograph everything in exactly the same way you know you'll try different things you'll you'll experiment with like you know let's try this shot or whatever different pose but in terms of like documenting the wedding day most wedding days will follow a pretty kind of routine format, routine format yeah. and you will have your ways of at this point in that at that point of the day, I try to do X, Y, and Z. It might not always work, but at least if you've got that workflow in your mind, you are not going to end up missing a massive point of it, mm. you know, a massive part of that day because you were like, well, I forgot to be there or mm. I was stood in the wrong place. Yeah. You know, it's like everyone's going to shoot stuff slightly different, but you'll have potentially 
at the point in this in the ceremony in a church ceremony I know that this happens at this point usually so I'm going to move to this place to be able to capture that properly that's a workflow mm. and perhaps so perhaps without even realizing it you know give yourself a bit more credit if you are rel- relatively new to, to to doing this you perhaps already have workloads or you're trialing different workflows without even realizing it because yeah. as you've said there is for a lot of weddings there is quite a a standard format for for how that will go so regardless of the types of weddings that that you're sort of experienced in it will follow a particular kind of course sort of through the day um and whether it's something as simple as the time that you will have with the couple after the ceremony you know you will have familiarized yourself with the venue at some point prior to that moment so you will have just had a look round for two or three little spots where you can take them to. And you might have a number of kind of poses or just not not necessarily heavy on the direction, but just certain things that you want to make sure that you get with the couple. So it's it's a process. And don't forget, that's what a workflow is. Yeah. A repeated process. Yeah, you mentioned just like that, you said at the beginning. Yeah, you mentioned there about the um about like knowing where you're gonna go for the portrait session, you know, that, I know that's part of my wedding day workflow. Like there will be a point in the morning where I will, if I've not been to that venue before, Mm -hmm. I'll have a quick, I'll factor in an amount of time, five, 10 minutes to have a quick walk around the venue Mm -hmm. outside, inside, whatever, to identify those places. And again, part of that workflow could be me pulling my phone out, looking at, where's west you know on the compass Mm. looking at where suns are going to set looking at sunset times which i might have done before the wedding who knows but you know Mm. i'm going to be there is a point in the day where you're going to allocate some time to those things potentially Mm -hmm. part of your workflow yeah and then you know the next workflow well actually just one thing that we do that's quite important is that on a wedding day part of the wedding day workflow at the end of the day is checking that we've got all the gear yeah. Right. Because <laughs> there's nothing worse than forgetting gear at wedding venues and having to drive back. So we always go through a little bit of a check system. You know, we'll look in all the bags and it'll be like, I'll say stuff to Lindsay like, right, how many microphones have you seen? How many cameras have we got? How many lenses have we got? And it's just a case <laughs> of, isn't it, just like going through the numbers so yeah. that we know that they're in the bags. You know, how many tripods are in there? How many light stands? It's just, it's daft. But at the same time, when you've left stuff at venues before and you've had to drive like an hour, two hours back to pick some up, you don't want to do that. So it's something that takes a minute yeah, and it's so invaluable. Part of your workflow. We don't yeah. have it written down, but we do it every time. Yeah. Um. So afterwards, download files, backup workflow should be the same every time. You sh- this is something you should just do every time, exactly the same. And then you know that you've got everything downloaded from the cameras. You know that you've got all of the files from each camera that you use. And you know that you've got copies of it. So that then, if you're going to wipe, everyone does this different. Some people will have a zillion SD cards and they won't wipe them until they've delivered weddings and stuff like that. If that's what you do, that's cool. That's up to you. But what I'd say is, we don't do that. We just make sure we have copies of all of the weddings. And I go through the folders before we then format the cards so that I can see that the files from each camera have copied over. And I'll I'll do that in a set way every time so that every time I download them, I look at them in a certain way, I look at them in a certain order. We even put them in certain mm. folders, don't we? Mm. We name the folders. And it, you know, even just like the project folder that we have is the same every time i just duplicate a folder and we do it exactly the same every Mm. time that way we can't get it wrong you know i mean you i have had a couple of incidents over the years where i've got stuff wrong and it's been where there's been three or four weddings on a weekend and i had space on a hard drive and i've been putting files on different places and it was a nightmare and i shit myself and you know i thought i'd lost some files i hadn't Mm. but i couldn't find them for a while and then i found them yeah. Didn't know where I'd put them. Nightmare. Oh, Never want to do that, that was, again. That was a that was a scary couple of hours. <laughs> scary for me just watching you <laughs> slowly die inside. Right. There you go. Awful. The, the the power of a workflow. I am never gonna divert from it ever again. Yeah. 
Um, and it takes that there's no shame in it is there gosh it, it takes us to make these you have to mistakes. make a mistake yeah to we've, we've got we've got to have these foul ups to to remember my gosh that felt horrendous that could have really cost me dearly yeah. i could have really let a couple down then and i do not want that to happen again so backtrack where have i gone wrong then okay iron it out and never and that, again and that's a good example of like how you create really effective workflows by going back over it and thinking all right where could this be better mm. where could we improve that a little bit yeah. it does it work you know if it works it works yeah is there an efficiency yes no right it's a great workflow then you know if it's nailed on it's good yeah a post-production workflow, that's one of those that over time you'll develop, it's going to save you time. If you do things in a certain way, whether you're editing photos, whether you're creating films, if you if you don't follow it the same way every time, you'll find that you kind of flim-flam around and it will take you a lot longer than somebody who goes, I always do this, this, then this, and then I do that. And at the end of it, I export it like this, and then I upload it like this. And that is massive. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that that does take some time to develop, and you might come go through lots of different reiterations of a, a post production workflow, whether it's photo or video. But believe me, when you get when you get good with it, it's it's a game changer. Mm. I really think it is. You know, you become very comfortable about your process, mm. um, and then because you you're doing it that way you notice your editing times just really drop mm. you know and if sorry right. I can just say you, those that I guess have been doing this for for perhaps more than three four five years will recognize and will know all all, t- all too well how the post-production process has changed and has increased and now how it's more often than not, certainly for photographers, it's a two-step process. It's a immediately after the wedding or within the weekend of the yeah, wedding. The stuff, and then yeah. a yeah. So we've got previews and all couples now are expecting some kind of preview. Um, or other, certainly from photographers, even from videographers, you know, there are people asking for, oh, can we have a, can we have a sneak peek? Can we have a preview trailer or something, you know, this weekend or how soon can you get that for us? So there's that, all that to, to kind of do with. So not only have you just gone through um, the, the downloading that you were talking about and the kind of safeguarding of those files, but then you kind of, the expectation is that you that first step you do a quick trawl of what you've got a quick cull through the photographs and what can you put together for an initial delivery of a preview then it gets put away then you come back to it for the main process of editing but then as part and parcel of your main process of editing now it's not just a case of preparing the gallery for delivery the films for delivery on whatever platform or format you might use there are now these additional edits yeah there are now these um additional formats of your edits to suit your marketing yeah workflow to suit what you're going to use um to showcase the work that you've done but again also that the expectations that the couples have got that they want there are very very few couples now that we come across that aren't necessarily interested in having a social friendly edit yeah you know so just think about if you have kind of so like i said maybe go back five years those of us that have done it for that long and think about what your deliverables were easy for me to say five years it's true. ago it's true. compared yeah, to, to be, what they are now and how much that yeah so to be specific of, we didn't do anything vertical back then you know for video certainly mm. you, you know you capture it horizontal you deliver it horizontal yeah for photos you yeah. do you shoot you shoot whatever ra- you know ra- aspect ratio makes sense horizontal vertical for the photo but you don't really worry about how it's going to be used because it's about how it works best the image now everybody wants vertical videos uh, shorter yeah. videos everybody wants vertical photos to be able to use on instagram so that's you know that's what you're saying in it Lynn's. yeah it's it's like the 
things have increased in terms of what people are expecting as output. And then there's all the suppliers wanting stuff and, you know, they're all going to want it in different formats and things. Mm. So, you know, just, just, you know, just very quickly on that from a vertical perspective, if you're trying to do, if you're a videographer, you're not going to be making, you, you're not going to be shooting vertically, I hope. Um, and, and I suppose that, you know, now vertical's kind of a big thing for your own marketing. It's, if you're just trying to make a vertical edit, but you don't have a workflow for that, that's not part of your workflow. That's going to take you some time. Mm. So again, part of that post-production workflow is having a set way of making your vertical videos almost templated so that, boom, I'm ready to go. I just use this template and yeah, I have to move photos around. I have to change things, but uh, videos around, but it's, it's about being quick with it, isn't mm. it? It's about it not taking you five hours. It's about taking you like, you know, 15 minutes. Yeah. And don't leave it to make it something that you'll go back and do retrospectively because... Because I, that's I a lot it, of hassle, yeah. Yeah. And you're backtracking. Yeah. And I think you... <sighs> some may love doing it. Some may think, oh my gosh you know, an extra, extra, extra bit of work that I now need to include, include in my post-production. But yeah, it's the nature of where we are, yeah. sadly, isn't and, it? And so you're right, do it not, at the not time. Not going back. If you, yeah. if, you, if you do it at the time, then it, it's done and you, you're, you're saving yourself time. And that That's is right. why you need a workflow. Because mm. then you're not like going, oh, yeah, I need to produce that for social media so that I've got something to market from the wedding. You just do it at the time when you mm. it takes you an extra fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour, end of the edit. Yeah. You know, you can actually sell this stuff as well. So it's additional money if you if you if you upsell it or mm. you include it, it's gonna make the client happy. It's gonna be like, you know, marketing for mm. you without mm. you having to do anything because it's just making it easier for it to share. It's gonna be more reach, it's gonna get more reach, things like that. Yeah. There's nothing to say that um you know a few months down the line so like this, this time of year now um so in the past couple of months you've been doing some work on the website for us so what you have naturally been doing is looking at previous as well as more recent weddings and whether it's images whether it is you know everybody likes to do at the start of the new year, new year for instance everybody likes to do a best of sort of compilation so there will be certain times in the year that you will naturally of course we're not saying never ever look back at your work and never use it no just at the point where you're heavy into wedding season so in terms of working through the process of this particular couple's deliverables this is what I'm going to do and as part and parcel of that I'm going to make sure I've got all the social edits or the marketing edits that I believe that I'm going to need at this point in time, both for them, but for me and the other suppliers as well. So yeah, we're not saying don't ever go back and look at your work again. Of course you, of course you should, of course you yeah. should. <laughs> um, and then we've got delivery workflow. So although you could say that's part of your post-production workflow, it's kind of separate because, you know, you're going to be going through a different set of steps. It's a shorter one, but it's a different set of steps because everybody's going to be delivering in a slightly different way. Everyone uses a different platform, a different gallery set, a different um, video delivery platform, whatever it is. And some people will be delivering on um, physical products. So for instance, you might be delivering on USB or you might be creating albums, you might be doing print, you need to have workflows for all these things and luckily you know there's so many tools now to do that but you know you still don't I, I, to my knowledge I don't know of companies that can put images or videos on USBs for you so you've still got to have some kind of workflow for getting those physical products ordered for getting those physical products to you to then put the files on them to then deliver them you know how do you deal with album stuff how do people choose the photos that they want to go in the album? How do you get those proofed? How do you get those ordered? These are all workflows. Um, it, you know, even just down to the, delivering the gallery, you know, email templates. How do they use the gallery? How do they use the video delivery platform? You know, rather than having to deal with questions all the time, if you've got templates, email templates, if you've got things that are very self-explanatory, you've got this process in place, that workflow is going to help you just to create a very efficient process. It takes, once everything's created through the post-production thing, it takes us, you know, minutes to deliver something because the email's there. We copy the links in, 
if they want to order anything else, there are emails that then get sent saying, you want to order an album, this is what we do, um, you know, or any other products. And, you know, most galleries have their own workflows built in to, to help you sell prints and things like that that are automated, which mm. is very useful. Um, topic for another day, but yeah. So, you've, you know, there are workflows built into galleries and video delivery platforms and all sorts. And then there's your post-wedding post marketing workflow, which isn't an essential thing. But what I'd say is, what we found is, you know, you've got your suppliers that, you know, are wanting images. So if they've if they've done something, your florist or makeup and hair or, you know, other, other people that were involved in the wedding are wanting an image or something, a musician from that, um, from that wedding, it's really important that that's not taking over your important time elsewhere. So if you if you know you're getting a lot of those inquir a lot of those requests, you know, for instance, you want to be sending potentially images and videos to the venue because you want them to share them. And now maybe you do this through Instagram, you tag people, and maybe that's your workflow. But maybe you send them parts of the gallery, or maybe you send them images or whatever. Just having a workflow for this will save you so much time and effort. And um, yeah, that's another another thing to talk about. In a, you could talk about in a lot of detail, but it's just to be aware of all these things. I feel like oh, I feel like we've talked a long <laughs> time there, Linz. A lot longer than I expected it to take. That a lot of workflows. Yeah, I mean, there's some. There are some others that we haven't talked about. For instance, you could have one for like bookkeeping and accountancy. Mm -hmm. That's an important part of your business that you need to be on top of. You know, we all have been there with the shit the tax returns due this week <laughs> you know you don't really want to be doing that it'd be much better if you had some kind of process for keeping all your receipts and invoices and everything in a way that was you know for instance we use a accountancy software called quickbooks because we're supposed to be able to keep on top of that i'm not saying we do but we're supposed to be able to keep on top of that and it's supposed to keep keep things going as we go along so that it doesn't build up and then become like a mammoth task at the at the wrong time of the year. Uh, you might have like, you know, workflows for sorting out your website. You know, websites need maintenance, they need updating. And that's something that you might not be doing every day or every week. But it's probably something that you should be doing every couple of months, going mm -hmm. through it, you know, maybe updating with pictures and videos and making sure they're all, it's working properly. So, Testing your website is so important and it's mm. something that if you don't have it as, whether it's a written workflow, like a formalised workflow or just something that every now and then you do in your head, I'm going to go through my entire website, check all the pages as if I was a punter and send myself an inquiry, make sure the inquiry form's working. Punter. Punter. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, Lindsay, why have I used that word, man? I don't want to have to edit that out. I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> you used flim flam a flim little bit ago as well, and I well. <laughs> I love that the wedding mavericks vocab. <laughs> <laughs> We're writing on dictionary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. Thank you for going through Thanks all that. Thanks for waffling and flim flamming. No, 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 no. Because I, I, I think I think that's really good because I can I can bet that there'll be some of you perhaps that will be thinking. Um, you know, yeah, of course I do this. Been doing this for years. I've got mine are tip top. I know my workflows inside out. I know what works. I know what doesn't. There might be some of you thinking, well, I've got a few, but actually, you know, highlighted a couple more there that might actually help me to be a little bit more efficient with my time, might help me with, oh, because I keep coming, you know, a bit unstuck with this or that. So that could help me in that side of things. And then, Again, you know, if you are sort of new to doing this or you're thinking of making the leap from something that you've been doing perhaps as a hobbyist and you are looking to kind of grow this into a business, leaving a different profession to, to do this. So hopefully that's been helpful in giving you an idea of um, perhaps just how many sort of different strands of your business um, might require a workflow, might require some kind of formalizing of those processes for you um and just as we said at the beginning it's just really worthwhile you know always always we would say we would never say this is our way this is how you should do it it's what works for you so 
please, when you when we, we when we kind of sort of share thoughts on this with you, please understand that we are just sharing what we do so that we can give some sort of context to you as to how it works in practice for us. But you, for your business, you will know what be- works best for you. Do what works for you, yeah. 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 A um, couple of tips. So what we'd say is, you know, keep things simple. Don't overcomplicate any workflows. Um, you know, we don't need, if if two steps will do, we don't need 10. And I'm guilty of, you know, back in the, the earlier days, thinking that a workflow, particularly one that we had in our CRM, had to have all these steps. And the, it was like a load of boxes that never got ticked because they were just automatic. So, you know, if you know you always do something in a certain way, just group that together. You know, if, if those tasks go hand in hand, they're all, you know, part of each other. That's part of your workflow. That bit of it, they don't have to be separate aspects of a workflow. Um, make them as streamlined as possible. You know, like I said, don't, ask, don't add steps into something for the sake of it. If you can miss those steps, if you can just get to that result by, by doing it quicker, do it. Use tools. Use tools to help you. You can get project management software, which helps for, I would say, you know, if you're doing bigger jobs, commercial jobs, dealing with lots of different people, working on a project, you know, you've got multiple people, um, lots and lots of different elements to it. Mm-hmm. You know, some sort of project management software, I won't start naming them, but there's loads out there, can help. But in terms of weddings just one of the kind of wedding crms is just going to really make a difference isn't it yeah um and and we use studio ninja and, and we think it's perfect for what, for what we need to use it for mm. and they're adding new features in the in the coming weeks that are just gonna they're gonna basically mean we have to use one less extra system which is great it's like for the scheduling and mm. stuff like that um yeah, these things exist, don't they? Yeah, these these to apps help you. or this they're, software because they're because they they're game changing. For, uh, absolutely, because the, there's there's just a big move with technology um, to towards automation of things, like you've said, towards kind of uh, the more sort of IT intelligence based approach to how can we ultimately make things more efficient for people? Um, because as a wedding photographer, videographer, you shouldn't be spending the majority of your time checking whether or not you've sent a particular email to someone yeah. checking whether or oh, did I send that invoice out did I not checking whether oh my god where's that memory card where are those files we shouldn't have that additional worry we shouldn't have those additional pressures when there are so many different tools that are available and processes practices that are available um to, to make those things easier for you, you know? Absolutely. So we'd love to hear from you if you've got any, uh, you know, workflows that we haven't mentioned mm. that you think are really good, helpful for wedding photography, videography businesses. We'd love to hear from you about that, you know, mm. or if, if we've inspired you or mentioned something in some way that's made you think, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to create, you know, something, then we hope that the tips and the stuff that we've explained today has been useful for you in some way. Yeah, and if it has, then please do get in touch, share your thoughts or experiences with us. We do love hearing from you. Um, as always, you can DM us at Instagram uh, or on Instagram at Wedding Mavericks. That's what <laughs> I meant to say. Or drop us an email. Um, if you do listen or watch, please uh, like and share. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, it'd be great to 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 have you along. Um, and thanks again. For, for listening for bearing with us I know Jules has said already it's not the the sexiest of topics but you know that's that's not what we're necessarily these are the foundations trying, of your business yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily what we're, we're we're trying to put out there there are plenty of YouTubers there are plenty of podcasts that are looking at that aspect of your particular craft this is just designed for you to we to want you to have a to, successful business yeah we want you to yeah. we want you to have a sustainable business. We we want you to think about things that maybe don't get much of your attention because it's not the fun stuff, but it's the important stuff. Mm. And 
you know, we're in there, we're in this to do good things, to 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 enjoy it, to do things for our couples. But we're also there because we're we're trying to run a business, we're trying to we're trying to make enough money to live. And that's hard for people right now. And we're we're just seeing more and more people struggling to you know to get the business side of it right. Mm. Okay. The, the shooting side now, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, but the shooting side of, of weddings has never been, you know, there's everybody's good at it, okay? But not everybody can be good at the business side. And if you want to shoot weddings and you want to make this your job and you want to be doing this for quite a few years, the only way is you're not going to be able to do that just because you can take a good photo or make a good film. Yeah. So that's why we want to focus on this stuff right now. While well, you've got time. The outro just got a bit serious. <laughs> I went off we script. <laughs> <laughs> Started <good>. ad-libbing. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> so we will wrap it up there for this week, guys. Thank you so much for, for listening and watching. We hope you're all well. Enjoy the snow if you've got it where you are. We'll see you again next week. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.